Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, welcome back to my channel. Uh, this video is going to be all about RF power splitters, RF dividers, and specifically we're looking at a Wilkinson divider, which is basically a resistive uh, divider. It's a two-way resistive divider. Divider. You have power coming in, RF power coming in, and being split here. These are generally uh, these resistive type of uh, dividers are generally. Uh, are called 6 dB, 6 dB splitters. Uh, normally, 3 dB means you're getting half of the power. All right. So, for example, if I'm sending about one watt of power from here, uh, 3 dB means you're getting about half watt here, half watt here. But through these Wilkinson divider, you get about 6 dB from your input to output port, any of these output port. You get about 6 dB, and these are generally known as 6 dB splitters. Why 6 dB? Because 3 dB get kind of get lost here in the resistive network. So it's a combination of real power that is being split, which is, uh, and plus you will have a loss due to this resistive network. Why am I saying it's a resistive network? Because let's observe the thickness of these transmission line. Uh, if you observe this closely, so this is close to your uh, input. So you have an input source that is going in. This transmission line thickness is this. This transmission line is thinner than this. This 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 transmission line is thinner than this. Now the basic rule of RF is that I remember it is that that the thinner the line is going to be, the higher the impedance is going to be. The thinner these transmission line is going to be, the thickness of these transmission line, the thinner they are the higher the impedance is going to be. So now as you can go down the ladder from, from the input to your splitting point, you will see that the thickness is being increased. So this is sort of like working like a, uh, you can think of it like a quarter wave transformers. Uh, it's getting thicker, 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 thicker. So the thicker the line are going to be, the smaller the impedance is going to be. So this is sort of like a parallel impedance that is happening in this Wilkinson divider. I don't have any data sheet of this. I just got it from China. So I don't know. Uh, I don't have any specific data sheet or, or I don't know what the output should look like. What would I expect? How does this divider will work? But based on the knowledge, uh, I can definitely see that from my input to any of these port, I should observe uh, my S12s uh, S1 to uh, S21s, S21s or S31s or S23s. S sorry, S21s and S31s should be about 6 dB. This is what I observe. Why 6 dB? These are called 6 dB splitters. 3 dB get lost in terms of resistive network, and 3 dB is there. That's why. So let me give you a better example. What do you expect to see? If I am giving one watt of power, I would expect quarter watt coming out from these. So quarter watt should be coming out from this. Quarter watt should be coming out of this. If it was a purely 3 dB lossless resistive network, lossless network, I would see about 3 dB coming out from this port and 3 dB coming out from this port. So one watt, if it was a lossless, I would be expecting to see half of the power coming out from here, half of the power is coming out of here. But since this is a resistive splitter, I would see about 6 dB. So that is about quarter watt of a power that should be coming out from here, quarter watt of the power should be coming out of the here. So that's just to make everything clear. Now let's test this using our VNA. I hope you understood the design, the basic design idea of this Wilkinson divider that I received. I don't have any data sheet for it or anything like that. We're just going to simply plug this in. So in order for me to do that, let me isolate one of the port with this dummy uh, 50 ohm load uh, that I also got it from China, frankly speaking. So so let's just call this port 1. Let's call this port 2. So let me isolate port 3 with a dummy load. And I hope it works. And let me insert my... So this is going to be my port one, all right? So we just isolated port three with this and port two here. So let me just simply plug it in. All 
So this is how I have it plugged in. Uh, one of the port, this is an input port. So this is how I have it plugged in. So this is my input port. Uh, this is going to be my output port. I'm calling this port 2. And this is just the dummy load. So let me just look at my result on my VNA. All right. So as I would expect to see, let's just look at my S11 first. So my S11 is good because uh, uh, what I did, let me just do my start frequency. So this is supposed to operate from 500 megahertz. Let's just go about, uh, let's go about 400 megahertz all the way. And let's go to 4.2 gigahertz at and stop frequency. So let's go here at 4.2 as being my stop frequency gigahertz and let's look at it. So now when I look at my marker, uh, let me just go to 4.2 quickly. So 4.2 is fine. Let's measure. Let's measure our S11 first. So S11, let me bring out my marker. Uh, where's my marker? Uh, all right, let's bring out marker one. It's already there. Let me just move this. So we're good. When it comes to the frequency, if I'm going from 400 megahertz, so everything is below negative 10 dB, so which is good. This is what I actually want. Everything is below negative 10 dB, and this is what I would expect to see. Let me, let me bring this closer. All right, I, I don't know if you if you guys can see this. So this is about S11, and uh, so we're good to go when it comes to S11. Now the thing that I need to know, what is the insertion loss? What is from S21? So basically what I want to look at, the second measurement that I'm interested in seeing is going to be my S12. S21, sorry, from port 1 to port 2. Port 1 is my input port, which is this, and port 2 is the one that is connected to my splitter. So if I if everything is right, I would see about negative 6 dB throughout the spectrum from 500 megahertz all the way up to uh, 4 gigahertz. This is what it's rated for. So let me just quickly look at my S21. And if I were to go ahead and look at it from uh, from my perspective, so if I'm going from, so I'm seeing about negative 3 dB. And if I move along this line, I should see about, it's going almost at about negative 6 dB up till negative 6.6 .6 and so on. And yeah, about negative 7. So at 4, up till 4 gigahertz, you're seeing about negative 6 dB. So, so, so it's pretty good. It's pretty good. I, I would say that, I mean, the price I paid for it for that negative 6 dB is quite good. But at other places, for example, I'm not seeing that negative 6 dB throughout because I would, I would expect to see negative 6 dB throughout S, S, S21. And this should be exactly the same on the other side as well. And S22 should be almost exactly the same uh, but not quite same though but it should be exactly the same so this is one of the measurement that I can do now for the second measurement what I'll do I will put so let me just go back here let me bring my camera my phone camera here and for the next measurement what I'll do I'll, I'll remove this I have to be really careful because I have to move this back. So let me just unscrew this. These cables are very... And let me move this dummy load now to port 2. Move this here. And now let's look at S31. From port one to port three. So let's look at this measurement now. It should be exactly the same because I should get about negative six dB.
throughout the spectrum. This is what I would expect to see because 3 dB is being lost. So I think I'm good to go. So when I make this measurement now, let me, because I'm holding it as well, let me just put this thing down. Now let's look at my S21 again. And indeed I am seeing, I should be seeing about flat negative 6 dB, but I'm seeing about from 1 gigahertz. Let me just go back to 400 megahertz. Uh, so it's supposed to operate from 500 megahertz. So I'm seeing about negative 3 dB and and if I were to go along, basically I'm looking at insertion loss, S21, and I'm seeing about negative 6 dB. This is negative 6 dB up till 4 gigahertz and some negative 7 and then and so on. So yeah, and the next thing I want to see, I want to see the isolation between the, the, my, my port, my actual ports. Um, which port I want to see the isolation? I'll show you in a little bit. Uh, I think this is going to be a little bit harder. So just give me a minute. Let me just unscrew this. I should, so what I'm, what I'm, what I'm trying to do is this. I want to see the actual isolation between these two ports. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take this, all right, I'm going to put this on my input port, dummy load, all right, uh, so my dummy load is there, it's a 50 ohm load, and I'm going to take this port and I'm going to insert it here. All right. Once I do that, now let's check this out. My S11 is good, which means basically, uh, so this is my port one. So this is my port one. This is, I'm treating this as a port one now. So S11 is quite good. S22 should be exactly the same. It's a little bit weird, but it's almost the same. Uh, but let's look at my S12 now. Let's see the isolation. So my isolation is quite down below here. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see this. This is indeed my S21. So my, so the port isolation is good. We're at any frequency, we are at about negative 23 dB, so which is good. And if I were to look at my S12, that is exactly the same. So the port isolation between these two ports are good and they are pretty good uh, and, and as you can see this that they are very much uh, if I were to just take this and average it out that's about negative 22 dB so that's the port isolation between the port so that, that that's pretty good that's 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 pretty good so so I got this Wilkinson power divider and just to check and see so so we got our S12s and S21s and things like that and and let me just remove this. Let me just leave this as is. And let me remove this and uh, and show you now. And and let's look at it. I mean, they are basically. It is basically sort of like like a resistive type of an a structure. And we can we can take our multimeter and let me just turn this on and put it on continuity and let's check and see the continuity of this. So as you can guys guys can clearly see this the thinner the line is the higher the impedance is going to be and the fatter the lines are going to be the thicker the line are going to be the lower the resistance is so basically you have higher resistance that is going down moving down 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 and all the way up to here and it should be because there is a connection so you should hear a beep between these things these points if you can hear it here we go you will see a beep here and the reason of making in splitter like this 
like this, you will get a higher bandwidth. And look at these tapered values. I mean, these transmission lines are a little bit tapered from the side. So you will get a, a wider bandwidth using a Wilkinson divider like this. You can have another network like this, another network like this, which is going up, and then you can have a four-way split and things like that. So I hope you like this small tutorial on how to actually characterize RF splitters and power dividers. If you have any questions, uh, leave it in the comment section, and please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel, and thanks for watching.